Hey guys, this is episode two of what we kind of dubbed in the first episode, Crane Rental TV. I don't know, uh, <laughs> still have to come up with the name here. Yeah. We just filmed this after episode one, so no real kind of lead time. We went to the bathroom, called uh, everybody, and then checked the emails, and now we're back. Okay. So we actually still have Todd here, Todd Brown, um, safety coordinator. That's good. Safety Tra training coordinator. Safety training coordinator slash operator. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I'll drive a truck. Once slash driver. In, once in a while. <laughs> Pretty rare. Yeah. Um, I'm Chris Martin, marketing coordinator with Crane Service Marks UCR. We're going to talk about today of how do you break into the crane industry. You know, we see this um, in the field of, well, you know, it looks cool. Uh, everybody loves seeing cranes and cranes in action. You know, just driving or when you're actually doing a job, you always have uh, people coming around saying, oh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a big piece of equipment. Yeah, it's you get a bunch of road, uh, street appeal. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a big, large, up to in our fleet, a G Grove GMK 7550, 500-ton all-terrain crane, putting out, uh, you know, potentially up to 200 feet of boom, and then, a, you know, a couple hundred feet of luffing jib, and you have a serious operation. I think we had, what, that goes up to, what, 440? Uh, it is 450 foot, I think, 450. 450. 450 feet. That's, uh, and that's, that's tip height. That's tip height, yeah. yeah. So you're putting down, you know, that's 45-story building. It's, it's, it's up there. So we have big equipment here, yeah. and um, you know we're trying to reach some of the guys maybe who don't know about the crane industry. Maybe that's you actually watching this video. Uh, you could be a guy in, the, in middle Missouri or middle Texas, an old farm guy who, runs, who grew up on a tractor sure. or driving a, you know, the diesel uh, truck or something like that, uh, to towing horses. You know, I mean, uh, we really want to talk to you guys and, and let you know how and the process, perhaps, of getting into this industry and becoming a crane operator, crane oiler, and join our team. Um, because this actually is a highly profitable business for uh, the operators. Yeah, I mean, be, be, because of the amount of responsibility you take on, because of the, uh, this is a high-end construction field, so it's, yeah. it, 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 you know, um, operators do make a good wage, and, uh, and rightfully so. Right. There's a lot of responsibility involved. And this doesn't necessarily require a uh, college degree to, to yeah. get a job here. And I, I say that in a few different ways. I mean, um, maybe you are going to decide if, to go to college or maybe you're thinking, man, I really don't want to go to college. I kind of want to work. And maybe I don't want to become a doctor or a lawyer or a psychologist or a, you know, something that, that would require an actual college degree. Yeah. Maybe that's not for you. No, and, and, and maybe college was for you. It maybe it was, and, and we do have people that have are college educated that are that run cranes. That does happen. Um, and we have people who uh, have high school educations who run cranes. Absolutely, and they're very intelligent guys. Uh, just the career, the college, for whatever reason, college wasn't in their path of life, and that's okay. There's no, I'm no, not, no. There's not, and, and everybody's different. I tell our guys, yeah. you know, there's a reason why I'm not a doctor. <laughs> right. you know, there's a or, reason. Or I'm not a, a rocket scientist. Right, and we all have different applications. And <laughs> the, the crane operator, first and foremost, honestly, in my opinion, needs to love equipment, like the equipment, like equipment. That's a big key to this, to be a really successful crane operator. Um, if you don't like equipment and you have no interest <laughs> in moving stuff and you just say, you know, I just want to sit there and move sticks, um, it, it, you're not going to make it. And you're talking about the crane sticks. Yeah, yeah, um, just going to operate. It, it doesn't work that you've got to like the equipment you're on. Um, like, like we've told Dominic told me one time yeah. when I first came, he says, you've got to love what you run. You've got to love what you run. And so that's the first key is, is to have an interest in the equipments and the nuts and bolts of the industry. So probably step one, I don't know how many steps we're going to go through today of how to become an operator. Step one, obviously, is have some level of love or passion for the equipment. Basically, out here, guys, um, we're basically kind of boys with toys. Yeah, right? yeah, that's exactly right. We're um, when they pull in that million dollar <laughs> machine, that and they say, "Todd, you get to run it." I'm pretty excited about yeah, that. Everybody gets excited. There's a lot of oohs. There's a lot of ahs. That's it's, right. You know, keeping the cranes shiny and presentable. Yeah, we we love our equipment. And uh, you know, you go to project sites, and everybody becomes an instant crane fan. Yeah, I mean, depending you know? on the yeah. The, it, it, I always tell our guys in the classes is keep in mind that, you know, people are watching you um, and people are filming you. Right. We get filmed all the time. Um, and so you want your best foot forward. And so um, there's a lot of interest in cranes and big equipment. Yeah. And Instagram, uh, the crane and crane operator hashtag has a bunch of photos uh, from around the world that are pretty cool to see. 
uh, tower cranes are very interesting. We're talking today going to be uh, talking basically about cranes in general. Yeah. But here in our uh, crane service, Barks Crane uh, fleet in the southwest, we basically just run uh, moving cranes, i.e. we have tires. So your all-terrain cranes, your hydraulic truck cranes, lattice boom um, uh, truck cranes, and the ones that I forgot that don't have wheels, crawler cranes, yeah, right? Crawler and tracks or... Track cranes. Yeah, um, we have also rough terrain cranes. Like RTs, yeah. Um, and carry decks. And then also other equipment like shooter forks. Sure. You know, your, your uh, extremes, your gales, uh, your straight mast forks. You know, we have straight mast forks for jack and roll type stuff. So there's a little bit of uh, everything in this business. You can either go to the machinery moving side. You could simply, uh, if you have a CDL class A, or want to do some over the road trucking. I'm not doing, they're not, we're not doing OTR work like you're uh, going from LA to New York, you know, with, no. a, with a box van of, uh, you know, toilet paper or something like that. We're hauling legal loads on drop decks, uh, double drops, or, you know, we have heavy hauling with, uh, you know, 9, 10, 12 axle rigs with Jeeps. Um, we have a lot of different opportunities and positions that you could be potentially working for. Uh, in this in this industry, it could be truck driver, yeah. Um, where, like I said, you're going to be hauling uh, legal loads of crane equipment, boom counterweights, uh, job material, counter uh, mats, which mm -hmm. we talked about in episode one. Mm -hmm. um, two. Now, if I'm forgetting one, let me know. Okay. Two. We have riggers, oilers, sure, who also requ are required to have a CDL class A. So you're going to be basically rigger, oiler, driver. Um, some projects you have a bunch of guys on the project. So you'll have maybe a few oilers and drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously the crane operator, right? And I'm trying to think what else there might be, jack and roll type yeah, machinery so, moving? So on the crane side, we have we have an operator, we have a rigger, oiler, mm -hmm. um, because those two things have kind of changed over the years because of type of equipment. And then also all of our riggers are signal people, meaning they're oh, trained yeah, to do yeah. signaling. Um, and they have to have that card in their wallet. Right. Signal person and rigging training. And rigging. And then, of course, right. since you're talking about, we have a, a, we call it jack and roll. People use different terms, but I like jack and roll, where we're moving, basically we're moving things sideways on the ground. Um, and there's some training and some, you know, forklifts involved, man right. lifts involved. Um, there's, there's a lot of aspects. So today, guys, we're not going to talk about too much in depth of how to become a truck driver. We're going to actually have to talk about that because that's subsequently a requirement to become a crane operator. It, for us, it is, yes. So we'll briefly talk about that, but we're not going to talk in depth of how to become a crane rigger or look. Today, we're going to really focus with Todd on how to become an operator. He's been an operator since the first episode uh, we talked about uh, you were, since 92. Yeah, I mean, I, I limited exposure, 92, first time really on a crane. Right. Um, when I, I really got exposed to the crane uh, world, really deeply, deeply, every day, all the time, 24-7, um, 07. Okay, so that's that's when you hit it hard. Yeah. Tell us about maybe your background. Did you go to high school uh, or did you go to college? Did you, you know, how did you get into the crane industry? Let's talk about that because most of these guys, this audience perhaps that we're reaching to with this video could be, you know, 15 to 18. Uh, sure. You could be 22 to 35. It just depends. But you all have to start somewhere. Right. And where did you start? Maybe this will hit home so, with some people. So I started out uh, basically in the electrical field. Okay. Um, and it's a family uh, uh, career. Right. Um, You're talking journeyman maybe? Yeah, journeyman electrician, uh, lineman. I've been lineman's license, although I've let those go. But um, And in the, that aspect, we needed cranes. Right. And so that's how I got involved with the cranes. Um, and, and, and from there, I built on it. I loved equipment. I loved equipment. They buy a crane, I want to run it, you know. Right. So that's where I was. Um, I, you know, I love the, the electrical field. It's a great field. Um, but I love equipment more. Gotcha. And I, I came here one day and said, you know what? I, I take care of our crane work for, this, for the contractor I was working for. Um, got my license. I had it, and, I, and they said, "Let's let's go to work." So that's so how I got here. How did how did you get that? So you started on a piece of equipment, or well, back then a little different, a yeah. little different than now. Um, basically, uh, I started uh, in the electrical field apprenticing. Right. Um, back of operator was sick one day, so I'll jump on there, and they liked it. They said, "You know what? You can do that." Um, pulled out a boom truck one day. We're they're gonna do some line work. Right. Um, had a nap for that, so I took over that. Then they needed someone licensed 
Um, a bunch of us went to get licensed. I was the only one who passed the test in that time. And we're talking about the NCCCO. No, in that time it was just when the first state of New Mexico. Oh, you're talking, okay, your um, state of New Mexico license. Yeah. Now, each, each state has their own requirements of licensing. Can, can be different. And mostly today we'll be talking about what's required for Texas, New Mexico. Yeah, and, and, and it can be different. So I got that. Um, and from there, I just kind of stuck mostly with the equipment and then came here and begged for a job and they said, let's, <laughs> let's put you to work. So. so at what point in time did you get your CDL, Class A, um, which is your commercial well, driver's license required for uh, over-the-road tractors uh, um, if you're hauling a load? Class B is only for no loads, bobtails, and cranes, right? Yeah, cl I mean, Class B is not going to be pulling a trailer, obviously. And, but Class A, we're going to have a tractor with the trailer, and, uh, and that's our application here, and we, everybody here needs to have a Class A. Now, technically, you could run a, uh, drive a crane with a Class B, um, but what our, we require here at Crane Service Mars United Crane Rigging is that you actually have a Class A license. Yes, yeah, we, we need a Class A, uh, you, you know, you, you've real limited your, your usefulness with the company and to yourself uh, by, by just getting a Class B. Uh, if you do the class B, a, a B, you might as well do the class A. It's not a big, big difference. There's some, but right. Uh, do you want to talk about how to get the class A, or do we, let's talk about let's, how, do, let's do crane. Okay, let's talk about how you, you got your class A. Um, originally, so they originally they had a chauffeur's license. Yeah. Years ago, they still they, have that. They, and it's they, a class A, but it's a different test you take. Test, yeah. And then that, that kind of and everybody kind of had the chauffeurs. And I didn't. You're talking about limo driving. Yeah, no, that's what it was called. <laughs> And then they, they kind of grandfathered out everybody into the new system. This I did system. hear about that. Yeah. What, if you had a chauffeur license, you got grandfathered into having a class A without taking the test or something. Yeah, like. you didn't have to test out and stuff. Well, I got in right after that happened. So I was oh, like, I was the guinea pig a little bit in our company right. getting a class A. Gotcha. I got my, I got my license. I drove the materials from uh, White Sands Missile Range okay. to Wichita Falls, Texas. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and, for one job and never used it again. So I let it go. Came back to crane service as soon as I came here, he says, well, you're good, but you don't have a class A license. So I turned around and went and got my class A again when I got here. Ah, okay, so you did have your class A. And you know, this is, I guess there's so much to the class A that we don't need to really go uh, into that process, but I'll give you a short description of what it takes because that is part of the job of you getting did, a crane. You've done that, right? Yeah, yeah, I have a class A commercial driver's license and I'll tell you what I did from my aspect. Right. You have to uh, pick up the book from your local DMV or you can print it out. Mm -hmm. And it's basically the manual of um, what you have to do for a written test. You have to take a written test and that has four or five sections, air brakes, uh, pulling trailers, general uh, practice, um, you know, so you read the book, there's questions at the end of it, and you have to go to the DMV and schedule a time to take these tests. Now you have to pass four, uh, five of the tests, and you have to have a percentage of, I think, 80 and above uh, for each section. Once you have that, you can get what's called the learner's permit. Mm -hmm. So you have a Class A learner's permit, much like you got when you got your first driver's license. Um, you can drive with a uh, other Class A driver, legally, and, but he has to be a Class A guy. And then after so many hours and comfortableness with this, then you're actually prepared to take the practical exam. That's right. And the practical exam uh, includes two different types of, well, multiple tests, subsets uh, of, of two general tests, a on-the-road driving test, where you go on a predetermined route of the city, mm -hmm. making sure you stop at railroads, tracks, are able to uh, show proficiency in the gearbox, i.e. the training. Your curves. Curves, your distance of how to get this 40 to 50 foot trailer around these corners, how to make a left turn, how to make a right turn. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a practitioner judging you, marking off points, so, oh, you didn't stop at the, the railroad, dude. That's minus five. You know, uh, he didn't have his, um, he didn't signal properly, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, he was going too slow and actually holding up traffic. Yeah. You know, that's, that's... You can be dinged on that. Yeah, you can be dinged yeah. on that. So you have that. Uh, you have a walk-around test to show the practitioner that, uh, or examiner, I don't want to say practitioner, the examiner that you're proficient in, in noticing maybe cracks, rust, mm -hmm. issues with uh, your crane or yeah. your tractor, you know. Uh, oil spots where you slack see, adjusters on your brakes, the whole nine yards. The, the, the same thing you do on your DVIR, the d vehicle report. Right. It's your vehicle inspection. Yeah, so you have to do a vehicle inspection with your examiner, mm -hmm. and he's counting out. Oh, did he check 
uh, this? Did he check this? Uh, what's a glad hand? You know, he'll ask you these questions. So that's that part. Then you go back to his place, and you have to have, actually do a driving thing where you have to back up the crane, or pardon me, the crane. You have to back up your tractor trailer yeah. in three or four different situations, straight back, back into the right, back into the left, alley Carly, dock. Carly Park and alley dock, yeah. So you get randomly picked uh, which ones you get, yeah. and you have to do those, and you get points taken off. You have like 20 points, and through all the tests, you can you have to have points left over or something. Yeah, yeah, so you, you have to pass the test, the, yeah. the practical exam. And this, this process, you know, depending on how well you can pick up this, this skill, could take, you know, perhaps if you guys are running tractors and, and heavy rigs in, uh, on your farm or doing some of that stuff now, you can maybe pick it up in a week. I, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, there, there are guys, and everybody's good at better things, and right. there's gonna be, the, and, and experience is a lot of it. Uh, you'll find guys that, that grew up in the country can get their CDL on the snap because they're always around equipment backing and moving and right and they're but then you the horse find, trailers this type of stuff yeah, so the, fifth wheel type situations and then you find other guys that you know you need a little more training a little time in the truck and that's that's acceptable and there's even schools that you can go to that, that can yeah. get you or get this done for you ahead of time yeah so there's, there's ways you can do it you can go through uh, become part of the union where they can help you the, the operator engineers union to help you get that. You can do, there's truck driving schools. You can search the internet um, to find a truck driving school near you. Locally, we have, actually have through the community college, CNM, mm -hmm. has an over the road trucking program that you can take. I think that's like a semester. Yep. And they give you equipment to run and everything like that. Um, here, I just kind of did it, passed the written test, and then went to just kind of driving after, in, the, in the afternoon with somebody. And then, you know, after six months later, I felt comfortable in taking the practical and did it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's and it wasn't when, easy. Yeah, when I came back here and I did not have it anymore. Um, <laughs> what do you? What's I, required then? Do you get to? I just I retook everything. It's been years and years and years. Yeah. Um, I just you know I just practiced a little bit and then we went down there and we took it and. So once you yeah once you know that paperwork you have to go down there you have to have a medical card so you have to have basically a physical that says you're uh, fit and uh, able to drive this truck. Mm -hmm. um, so you need drug to test. Drug test. Yeah. So. That's just, you know, that long description is just over the Class A part, which is required to become an operator. Yeah, I mean, we to really, some degree. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we really, uh, uh, you need to be a Class A operator to be... Because you're being driving these to be, trains. To be useful, because you have to move the units from place to place. It's not, there's not a chauffeur thing where you just get to drive in a pickup truck and you, you know, there's a crane set up there and you get in the thing, operate it, get down, go home, and, you know, someone else takes the crane apart, right? Uh, maybe if you're running uh, some extreme crane unit that's... That might be application, but no, not here. Not here. <laughs> That's not. So we don't have those kind of operators. So step one, recap: have to have passion for this uh, heavy, heavy machinery. For this stuff, yeah. Have to have some passion or love or some degree of um, fascination with that. Yeah. B, you need a Class A driver's license. We kind of briefly explained uh, the process there. Obviously, it's more in depth than that. What's step three, Todd? For for crane operator? Yeah. For crane operator. So, well, you've got your passion, you, you, so, yeah, you've got, got your to, CDL. Now what? N now what? you got to get into the industry. Okay. So and how you, would somebody do that? Well, there's different ways to do this. You could go down to a local union hall okay. and apply for their apprenticeship Okay. as a crane operator. Operating engineers union hall. So right. that's operating engineers. Right. That's one option. Okay. Um, you can also hire on with a contractor, someone like us, or somebody who's at rental. Crane service marks, or even a general contractor that may use. Could be. Could they be. They use cranes. Yeah. Your HVAC be. guy. Your HVAC guy. You may. And even they, even a sign guy. Little sign guys do use them, and, and you know there's a vast. I mean, if you really want in the industry, in my my opinion, because yeah. starting where I, I wish I would have came to crane rental earlier. So you just jump into you find the local crane rental house, and I would go, I would go put in an application, to have your CDL. Right, um, and, and because we look at that uh, for hiring here, you know, we really won't even look at guys who don't have a class. No, 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 no. And now there's guys who say, I'm, "I'm working on. I have my learner's permit. I'm almost there. I just need to take a test." And then there's some leeway here. Maybe uh, one of our branch managers will. It, yeah, and, and that would be. A, but we're talking. If you want in, CDL, I would hire on with a crane rental outfit. Uh, I would go with. I mean, you're going to be an oiler, a rigger, and moving loads. Right. And start getting some, some time around the units and the cranes and familiarity. Mm -hmm. um, apprenticeship is great for the union. Those kinds of opportunities. From there, you, you, you've, you've got to work with, uh, become an oiler or a rigger on a crane. You get time on the crane, actually on the sticks, with direction. 
right. from a licensed uh, operator. Yeah, because that's what I asked you kind of pre-interview here on the side is, you know, you're going to have uh, guys, your question would be is, well, how do I become a crane operator if you have to have an NCCO, NCCCO yeah. license and have a class A to get the job, but I have no experience. I'm just a guy out of high school who uh, has a love for this business or just a love for the equipment sure. yeah. and wants to try this thing and make some money. Yeah, I, I mean, the, get involved, get in the, the, the industry, and there's ways in. We need signal people. We need rickers. We need oilers. Those people are needed. They're assets. These cranes can't run without these people. Yeah. Get around the equipment. Get, get some little seat time in there with your guys under supervision. Yeah. Those kinds of things. From that point, you can build yourself up to the point where you're ready to take an NCCCO exam. So after you've got your license, you've hired on to fictitiously, uh, you know, example-wise, you, you put in your application here at Crane Service where we're at right now. Right. You got your uh, application in. We say, okay, yeah, now you're going to spend maybe four to six months or two to eight months being an oiler rigger just depends on how fast you pick it up well it depends on the need it depends on um, how fast you pick it up right some people become a, a rigger an oiler and they realize the money they're making is so good compared to the uh, the responsibility level meaning the crane operator has a greater ah. response and some people want to stay at that level and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily that's that's so you might find that you love, you're with the equipment, you're handling, you're doing, you just don't want to be on the sticks and have the, uh, that responsibility. And that's okay. We see that a bunch of uh, sure. a bunch of our guys here are really extremely good oilers and riggers. They're professional riggers. They're professional. They've taken all of our signalman rigging classes. But you go out there, and I would trust this guy with your life when I'm taking out when you're out there on a project, and basically you have to. You are because yeah. they're suspending these loads that weigh a couple hundreds of thousand, pardon me, hundreds of thousands of pounds in the air. Sure. And if, if something snaps or they don't do it right, or they don't know what they're doing, everybody has a chance of getting hurt that yeah, day. Yeah, there's responsibilities. That may be the level that you want to go to. Um, you want to maybe go, go beyond right. that level. Now, time frames. You know, to put a time frame on it would... It's hard to do you, that. Because you can't, I can't predict your exposure level to the equipment. Right. And I can't predict what a person's actual natural ability on the equipment is. So... So the, the, all these things come into factors. Um, and in, in some of those an guys, apprenticeship can run four years. Yeah, some of the, some of the guys who are been here at Crane Service uh, have been here maybe five, ten years, and they still don't operate cranes. But they're slowly starting to. And some, yeah, they didn't. And then they become, oh, now they're an operator. Yeah, and it happens. Um, the key, the key to this thing is, you know, to always be progressing. And moving to that next step and trying to attain it, and that alone will get you somewhere. Right. Um, you know, just because you have an NCCCO certification, you right. have that thing in your pocket. Right. As we know, does not make you a crane operator. That's true. Uh, because we can hire people straight out of a crane operating school, where so many weeks they say you're a crane operator. Here's your certification. You're talking about experience. Experience is the key. Yeah. You need both. You need the book learning, you need the testing, and you need, and then you need experience. You need all three things. And you need the street smarts. And street, sometimes you need the street <laughs> smarts too. You need the street smarts and the book knowledge. Yeah. Because uh, should we come, uh, well, let's talk about, okay, let's fast forward. So you spent four to six months or eight months or a year or four years as, as an apprentice um, or as an oiler rigger on a, you know, a Terex AC100-4L, which is what you worked on, 120 ton all terrain. Uh, class crane, beautiful crane. Um, you were the rigger. You did. Uh, you put the out outrigger mats down. You worked the outriggers. You uh, stack the counterweights. Stack the counterweights. Um, you rigged the loads. You know when you were doing something, maybe you stacked the counterweights and actually operated the crane. Sure. And did that to get some exposure and level there under, under supervision. Under supervision, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's not, not like we just jump on and do these things. Yeah. Right, right. This is under uh, supervision, much like your learner's permit on your CDL would be. You know, you're, I mean, that's how you learn this, through yeah. supervised um, exposure and experience. Yeah, we have to be apprentice people. We have to apprentice. So after that duration, whatever it is, we talked about it, it's no real magic bullet of how long it's going to take for everybody. But once you're there, what does it take to get your NCCCO? So uh, the, did I even put enough C's there? Yeah, you did. That was exactly right. <laughs> NCCCO, yeah. And maybe uh, say what it stands for. National Commission for the Certification of Crane Operators. Now, for crane service, Mark UCR, we require NCCCO operators. Now, there are other uh, factors involved as well. We need to have uh, local accreditation. If you're in the state of Mexico, you have to have an operating license for New Mexico. State of New Mexico. Yeah. Texas is not, the way, not Texas, that way. Yeah, Texas is not that way, although the federal law is here and CCO and, or something equivalent just 
nationwide is going to be required. And there are, uh, th what are the other accrediting? Um, uh, OECP um, is one of them. You can okay. OECP. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a variety of them. Um, I will tell everybody, and if I say NCCCO right. is the standard, it's the original. Um, that's why we use it, um, and it is accepted everywhere. I have, never, I have never gone to a place where they do not accept that. Interesting. So this is, if you're going to do it, and it's my opinion, stick with what's guaranteed to get you in the door. So you could go another brand, and this is not a video to say how great NCCCO is. That's I'm just sad. trying to tell you guys and kind of give you advice and show you what it's going to take to get this, to get this yeah, number yeah. job. Now there are other accrediting uh, committees. Um, CIC, uh, yeah, OECP. CIC. And we'll link them up in the description here. Um, but what Todd is saying from his years and experience as an operator, that NCCCO uh, is the way to go. If you're going to invest the time and money and experience and you're going to invest yourself in something, um, we decided here yeah. that we were going to go with the most recognized standard, and that is the most recognized standard. So we got that. Okay, so we have uh, our experience built up. We're ready to get our NCCCCCCCO yeah, license. Yeah, <laughs> You have to think about how many C's you say, and it just kind of runs together. And so a lot of times we can say, we'll just say, you got, do you have your CCO? We'll right. say that. Yeah. Yeah. And then everybody knows what it is. So what, what do we have to do now? Now that we have our experience and we're ready to take the test and maybe become an operator, officially become an operator. Uh, on paper, yeah. yeah so on so, paper. Uh, so to, to do that, um, for us internally, what we would like to do is we like to give a, a class on how to pass your written exam right. and go over the, really the basics of cranes. I mean, from A to Z and really, really get a strong understanding of this and a strong understanding of load charts on cranes because Cranes, you don't just get in and operate. Right? right, right. From that, once you have that experience and you're comfortable with that information, you would then want to take a written test. Um, that written test, depending on what classification of crane you want to run, so it's going to be a lot of testing or it's going to be minimal. Um, it just depends. And um, there's different classifications. Now, there's um, small hydro, large hydro, and conventional, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the basic way to break them down. Um, CCO is going to have a, a letter classification for each of those. Right. Um, you know, a boom truck, something you stand on the side of, uh, you, the cab doesn't rotate with the, uh, the upper, um, is your basic license or certification. Um, then from there, you have something hot, a bigger, bigger crane where you, you, the cab actually moves with the upper structure. Yeah, swing cab is what it's called. Swing cab. And then, um, then you go to conventional cranes, which can be either on a truck mount or on tracks. Right. Um, for for us now, there's also tower crane certifications. Right. Um, Our UCR branch uses tower cranes. They do, and um, that's a know, different uh, NCC CO has a tower crane as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, knuckle booms, all kinds of other things that you can do. But for us here at this branch, we, right. we don't deal with tower cranes. So we're talking strictly. Uh, small, large, and conventional licenses. Right. So you take that written test. Um, now, you within a year of taking that test and passing it, mm -hmm. um, and again, you can do this in any order. You have to take a practical examination. That's where you go to someone like me. We get you on a crane. Um, we we test you basically. And we test here. But what he's talking about is. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the big claw game you see at Dave and Buster's or whatever, yeah, right? it is that way. Uh, you have your sticks, too, uh, and, you know, each one has a different function. And, but the test is, the practical test is much like your practical on the CDL. You have to actually, you have to display um, knowledge of the machinery, yes. is the best way to put it. Yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to display knowledge of the ma machinery. And there's time limits. And there's time, and then you have to display your competency at running that piece of equipment. Right. You have to know how to shut it down properly, and explain it, how to inspect it properly, and explain that. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically, once you've tested that, and you've done the written portion, and the practical exams, you will receive a card, a certification, that, with your picture on it, saying that you're approved to whatever class that you tested out in. And now, like you said earlier, technically you could have this piece of paper or accreditation, much like in a CDL, you actually have to put in time and experience to become a knowledgeable crane operator. Right. But you could have done that through your four to six, from your zero to four years yeah, there's and no, built it up. Yeah, just because you have the car doesn't mean that you're going to be on a crane automatically. But a lot of times what we'll do is that's a good time to start saying, hey, you know what, could you do some crane rental for our boom truck? Right. And work your way up on the equipment size and capacities. And different responsibility levels. Mm -hmm. It's a progression. 
So just because you have that certification, yeah, doesn't necessarily make mean that someone's going to hire you today to go run their 550 ton crane. Right, it doesn't work that. All right, guys, we're back. Little GoPro action. Car got full, uh, so we're back, um, and we're talking about you were basically need the experience whether you have this card or not. That's correct. I mean, it, it, you, need, you need the experience to pass a test, but you need the deep experience to be running a piece of equipment. You're not, not, not just gonna jump on a crane once yeah. you get that card. And, and a lot of people say, you know, you gotta realize that these are highly advanced, very mm -hmm. expensive piece of equipment with a lot of responsibility and, and a lot of potential to do harm. So you want that experience, you want that time. Um, and it varies from person to person how, you know, you know where you're at in this, this process. But uh, the card's not a given, you know, having an NCCO doesn't make you an operator. But it's a step. It's part of the process for us. I erased some stuff from, uh, matting stuff from our other episode to put out a little timeline here maybe that we can put down. So this would be, uh, I'm left-handed, uh, I'm just going to put A for Class A okay. for license, right? Yeah, get your Class A. That's step one, as you can see right here. This period, you know, is you know, zero to four years, right? Yeah, because you could go through a four-year apprenticeship. And that's not unusual, that's, that's conceivable. And this point here is where you probably take your practical NCCCO test, right? right? And then here's maybe now, where you actually operate a crane, right? That's correct. Now during this period, you're gonna be uh, assisting your op crane operator because you're going to be the rigor oiler. That's most. And likely. you're going to be trying to assist the operator under supervision to maybe run the crane or to do a little bit of the functions or here's what you know, here's how you cable up or cable down or here's the things to think about, right? Or yeah, maybe, I mean this is this is on job experience that's being around. There's you know a lot there's a lot more to being a crane operator than just sitting in that seat. And that's what you're learning. That's what you're learning over that time, and you're helping the operator. Um, oh, you're, and you become his eyes on the ground. Believe it or not, a lot of the information the crane operator gets you gets it from his rigger and his oilers and his signal person. So um, you become the eyes on the ground. Um, one thing is when the operator is operating the crane, the oiler rigger is usually the one putting out the outrigger. So that's probably where you're going to start in your crane experience is, is leveling the crane out, getting the proper matting. Uh, from episode one that we talked about under your crane, right? And you're going to start to pick up different things that you see about the, the ground and the matting and you're going to learn. Sure, you're going to be looking at um, outrigger conditions, things, uh, the, the, the soil conditions, whether there's, you're starting to sink a little bit or have little issues, you're going to notify that operator. Right. So you become those eyes and ears and it's a very important position. It's, it, we underestimate that sometimes. It's uh, basically a team. You're oh, talking. it's a team effort. There's, yeah. I, I mean, I can't do it without my oiler. Um, and sometimes when I go out and I'm an oiler or a rigger for a crane operator, he can't do it without me. So, yeah, that's just how it goes. Yeah, so you do have to have that attitude of you, you've got to have the, the ability to work hard um, and, and to work and work um, off schedule in some cases. And that's, that's, it can be hard at, at times, but the, the, the benefits are great. Yeah. Uh, um, now, I guess we technically go into pay structure and that kind of nonsense uh, and that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not going to get into exact dollar amounts no, 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 no. and and cuz every union's different, every company has their own guidelines and regulations sure. based off experience, based off a tonnage crane you're operating, based off of a lot of different factors if you're going to be uh, living basically on site, you know, if you're doing a bunch of uh, plant shutdown work, you're going to get obviously more money because you have more billable hours. So there's a lot of factors that goes into base pay and and pay beyond the base pay. Yeah. But that is a factor because you guys would think, well, uh, I can go to college and maybe spend, you know, twenty to a hundred thousand dollars getting a degree, and then now you have student loans and debt based off that degree, and, and you're starting off uh, thirty thousand somewhere. So you have to build that back, or you could go to perhaps skip the college route uh, if you don't want to, and join this if you have a love and passion for heavy machinery, and start out, um, you know, somewhere. I don't know, maybe the tens or something like that, and uh, ten dollars an hour maybe uh, for driving a truck. Yeah, again, I wouldn't want to speak to the. Yeah, I don't know the dollar man. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but I'm just getting hypothetical. Let, let me get, let me put it this way. Okay, you, crane uh, operators. If, let's just just do it because that's what your, the goal would be in this case. A crane operator can right. make can make anywhere from 
um, poverty wages, if he doesn't barely wants to work and does nothing, to hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Yeah, talking six figures. Six figures. It is, that, is a, that is a reasonable goal as a crane operator, six figures. When you compare that to some, uh, to college level uh, degrees and uh, careers, um, in some cases, from strictly a financial yeah. point, it is far more financially beneficial to go the route of a crane operator than some of those degrees. And that, that's a hard thing to say because we don't want to, we don't want to set, you know, push people away from college. That's not the idea here. Um, but there's, there's financial gain and benefit to this industry. Yeah, and basically there's options. You have options. Uh, if, if you're the high school guy or, or a guy who's younger in age watching this video, um, and haven't decided on going to college or something like that. Um, yeah, we're not saying don't go to college if you don't want to go to college. What we're saying is you have options once you uh, graduate from high school. Um, well, there's, there's one thing I want to make clear, and I, I've heard before. Well, I was no good in school, so now I want to be a crane operator. And I think that doesn't really apply uh, too well, because if you want to be a crane operator, you have to know, you have to be able to do some math. Yeah, you have to be smart. You can see some math we have going up here. Basically, Pythagorean theorem, uh, a plus a squared plus b squared equals c squared gets you your load angle multiplier. Yeah, there's there and plus even, other different things. Yeah, I mean, and these things are teachable and they're they're attainable. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. But but to have we don't want people to have the view that oh I don't want to do that. I don't want to do the paper end. So I'll be a crane operator. It right. doesn't work that way. You have to do both. Yeah, you're still gonna have. Uh, most of our guys, um, all of our guys are, you know, very intelligent guys. This takes a lot of ability, a lot of confidence, a lot of self-motivation, a lot of um, experiences involved. You see uh, in our industry guys who are still working at 60 or 70. Sure. And started maybe right where you're sitting at on your computer watching this or on your iPhone at maybe 18 or 17. Sure. Um, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, we've, seen, we've seen guys, um, I mean, I've seen guys retire. At a good, good ripe old age, and you talk about a retirement, um, the, they're not lacking in anything with a whole lifetime of doing this and, and contributing to the retirement. So and that's 401k to the union, or it can be well, we have the, the unions have a pension, um, there's other options for depending on your union or non union, and I'm not going to. Oh, that's right, yeah, because you have mixed, uh, you mixed, can have but, mixed houses, but but when you look at a, a career in this and the longevity and the pay rates, which can get pretty substantial. Yeah, uh, um, the benefits to it. Uh, it's a it's a real option for a lot of people. Viable yeah. business. Uh, if you make if how many people can make six figures um, and have you know little uh, higher level education? Yeah, it, for that it's 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 rare. Um, you also look at debt for for an education. So yeah. there's, there's lots of things. Where, but also you have to have an aptitude for it. You have to love the, the yeah, equipment, the stuff, and what we do. But that's, that's step one in our flow chart we talked about. If you don't have love or passion You're for this business, you might as well just click this video off. And, um, yeah, you know, do something else. Right. It, it's, it's, it's a great industry. I, I personally wish that I would have went. I did crane work early. Right. But um, I didn't really become proficient in the way I should have until I went to rental. Um, I wish I would have done it earlier. Yeah. The benefits are great. And this, I don't know, you were saying in a, in a brief aside while we were changing out batteries and, and uh, cards in our Hero 4 GoPro, um, that you know this video didn't really exist in your time. In the sense of, here's kind of a ballpark plan of how you get there, what's involved in the business, yeah, no. what it takes to become a crane operator. So well, well, I, one thing you see is that there's an old way of doing things which is, uh, is I'm not going to tell him he's going to take my job. Right. I'm not going to. You know, there's a path to get to things, and believe it or not, it's hard to find the path. And it's kind of pretty simple. We kind of put it down here on this. It's very small, small chart, but the, getting the knowledge to the masses and to the communities is what we're trying to accomplish with this video episode two. Here is how do I become a crane operator? Uh, you have the potential of making upwards of six figures. Um, no, you know, I don't want to get the, the six figures. Yes, but you know, I wouldn't get stuck on the. Well, oh, okay, yeah, it's not getting stuck on anything. Yeah, it's so all it's all based off, like you said, of how much time you put into it, how much experience you have, what you want to put into it, what you put. Yeah, just like anything in life, uh, you know, if you play sports or football, you're only going to get out of it what you put in. Yeah, and that is going to be up to you. Now you could do a bunch of different things, plant shutdowns and all this stuff. But I, okay, I 
bring yeah. back that six figure money uh, thing because I want people to understand that this business does have the potential to feed your family, support your lifestyle, whatever that may be, yeah. and it has the potential for you to build a great life doing this. That's why I bring that up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And he, you're right. Like, but it, but it, it's a sliding scale. It is a sliding scale. Um, it's time and experience, yeah. like anything. But it is at a very accelerated rate when you can look at other industries. We make big, mo good money yeah. very quickly here, and, th and, and that's hard to beat. But the responsibility level is high. Yeah, it's high. You're basically dealing with people's lives on site, your own. Yeah. Um, a lot of things and factors go into it. And that's why you see the response. That's why you see some people never graduate to a crane operator. Sure. They stay at that crane uh, rigger or and that's what they're comfortable with. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. No. no Today no. we're talking about crane operators. So we've we're got as that. We have great riggers, yeah. in my opinion, should be running this company. I mean, right. that, that's how good these guys are. They are that competent. But they choose to stay at that level because they make a good living for their family, and they're at a responsibility level that they're com comfortable with. So we're kind of running out of time here. Uh, this card's going to be full by the time uh, if we know it because we talk a lot here. So I'm going to want to go over some brief other things. Now, money is not the only thing that, you know, money doesn't only attract certain people. Yeah. I.e., that's his only one motivation for sure, some people, sure. no. and that motivation is for a certain type of people. Another motivation is, is uh, you know, um, you know, fame and that kind of stuff. And, and another motivation is doing good for community and, and support. But what you see in this industry is you see guys who actually build the city. You're at rock bottom of building. Uh, tall buildings, um, keeping water utilities running. You're an integral part of, you know, society. And that may be a motivation for you to become a crane operator, too. I mean, there's that aspect. It, you know, it's a nice thing. I, I'll drive out of town, and I look up on the mountain, and I'll say, you know what? I set that tower on that mountain. Or, or, and you remember that I, I rem Of course I remember. And then I've been involved in a lot of projects and a lot of things. And it, it, it gives you pride and a sense of accomplishment that you had a piece to, to building this. We've done... Wind turbines, transformers. Movie work. We've movies. movies, yeah. We've been in the movies. Uh, Avengers. Uh, T3 Salvation, um, you know, Ridiculous Six, which now is on Netflix. Yeah. I mean, I could go on for days of how many movies we've done. Yeah, we do a lot of that work. Um, so it's, can, it's a sense of pride. I see a movie and I think, you know what, I did that. Yeah. Or, that was me sitting in that crane or, you know, whatever it was in there. And it gives you a pride and a sense of value. So I wanted to bring up that aspect of the pride and, and you actually helping build a community because some things, uh, people are motivated by different reasons, of course, and that... That's the motivation that I kind of like because it's kind of cool. You're like, uh, yeah, I was on site when we were hoisting this or that wind turbine. You drive by and like, yeah, we changed the blades out and I was there and we were doing some some work there and it's really cool um, to be you know, part of it. It's a really cool feeling in my in my eyes. One thing you'll notice is you go do a big project or a project, something that's extreme, a big boiler that's hundreds of thousands yeah. of years, and it's, it's complicated, and, it's, and you have a plan, and you implement this plan, and you, you make this pick, and you set this thing, and this thing's running, making this client lots of money, and you have a pride in it, and then the crew that you're with, we've accomplished these things together, so there's a camaraderie that you're not going to get in a lot of fields. Yeah, you're working with your brother and your family, you know, in we, this industry, you never walk alone. We don't walk alone. We are a brother's keeper in this industry. Right. My success is my oiler's success. It, when he gets his license and he becomes a crane operator, he takes my crane and I move on to the next one. There's pride in that. I mean, there's, a, there's well, something you, you don't get in most industries. Yeah, you, you uh, grow your the generation below you once you get into here and you move on to a bigger crane or smaller or do a different location or whatever, and he gets his crane. I mean, that's and, how, then, and then he teaches his oiler and, and goes from there. Um, but this is a pretty viable business for anybody, all education levels. It's, there's a pl I always say that, you know, there's a place for everybody mm -hmm. um, in society and that we all can contribute and build this. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the same thing here in the crane world. There's a place for us, you know. Maybe I'm a good truck driver and I'm a rigger, but I don't want the responsibility. Hey, that's place okay. That you, maybe I want to run that big crane and I want to be on the biggest crane possible. There's a place for that too. And we have also, uh, you know, other types of admin type jobs too that we'll, you know, we can go over on other sure, sub yeah. subsequent videos. We're talking about AutoCAD engineers. Yeah, we we, we uh, always need CAD engineers for projects because these projects are really engineered lifts. Right, we obviously have sales um, and other items uh, that are admin type work. Safety work, I went from a crane operator to safety training. Uh, yeah, you were in the seat since 92 off and on, really got hit it hard, you said no, seven. Yeah. And then now have uh, graduated into 
uh, training and being safety for our company, as well as you know, two percent. You said yeah. you're ninety eight percent safety, two percent running crane sometimes too. So there's you know there's a progression here of what you do once you get to the operator. There's a lot, a lot more beyond that. Yeah, you could be you, know, you could have your next thing of you know here. This is where it starts off again because you know we're running out of space here. You could be on a sixty ton right here. Then you're on the ninety. Then you know the five fifty or something. If you prove yourself. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and the thing about this is, is a lot of people like, tonnage is or size of crane is 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 a step up. Right. But sometimes what happens is you might say, you know what, I need a break from this because it's it's pretty demanding. They'll go ahead and put you on the forty ton to run a taxi fleet in town. Right. So you get a break from it and, you, and then you go back. So there's a lot of options and there's a lot of place to go. And I've had that situation where I mm -hmm. hey I, I, I need my time at home now or I need this or I need that. Yeah. There's flex it's flexible. There's so many different options within it. Now, uh, most of your crane rental places, um, wherever you're watching this video at, have, you know, they have different locations, different type of equipment, of course. Uh, you know, here we basically cover the southwest with, of New Mexico and uh, Texas, uh, West Texas to be more specific, yeah. and the Panhandle area. So, you know, there's a lot of places you're going to get to travel. Uh, you get to see a bunch of places. Um, if you like that, that's always a plus. Um, you get to see definitely new things every day. No day is the same. I love that. I love that about that's what I loved when I came here. Yeah, uh, you you like the fact that uh, no day is ever the same. Yeah, I mean, I was always on a new job, new people, new experience, new 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 feet that we had to do. Loved it. And it keeps you on your toes because you could be on technically the same job. And what I mean by that is maybe you're lifting the same transformer at the same site, but when you go there, something's always different. It's, it's new, new people, maybe new contractors. New. Uh, you know, it's different situations. Yeah, I love the rental market. I love the rental market. Yeah, no days, uh, it's never the same, and you, you know, every situation's different, every project's different, so that's really cool, I like that too. Yeah. I'm seeing the country. Yeah, I mean, I've got to travel, do yeah. the crane work, um, the doing the electric work too, but the crane work, I've got to see projects and been right in the middle of some amazing, amazing things that most people will never see in their life. Yeah, behind the scenes stuff, you get basically behind the scene access to uh, different contractors. You're at the ground level of some of the buildings. Biggest operations, plants, um, giant stacks that you've involved in putting those up. There's just some amazing Pretty cool product. stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's always fun being a part of that. And I, I don't know, what do you like most? You said probably the no day being the same, then maybe... Um, I love the equipment. That's always been. Yeah, I guess that's that's, that's always one. been my thing, uh, and that's why I got here. But I like no days the same. I like having someone or people that you work with that you have a routine and an ability to watch each other's back yeah. and a camaraderie. I love that part of it. Um, I like knowing that I don't have to say anything to a person and it's taken care of. You know, yeah, you get that kind of bond with your yeah, oiler. You could look at somebody and he knows, I know what he's thinking, he knows what I'm thinking. Right. And we know what we're going to do next and how we're going to handle something. Um, it, it becomes enjoyable to go to work when it's like that. Interesting. Yeah. So I think over the last 45 minutes now, I'm looking at the clock, our run time is about 48 minutes. Last hour, <laughs> we spent two hours um, doing this. The first episode talked about mats. Now we're talking about how to become a crane operator. Um, check out the description. We'll link up some of the things that you may need to know how to get a CDL. We'll link up, uh, you know, maybe some some of that. You can always check out like your like we talked about your community college um, truck driving schools. NCCSI, we can do that. Yeah. Once you get that, then you uh, join our team or your local crane rental team. Uh, become an oiler rigger driver, and then once you get proficient with running the crane uh, under under supervised conditions, of course, you can take your NCCO written and practical. Mm -hmm. State of New Mexico if you're here. State, State of New Mexico, Mexico if you're here, um, and then from there, you know, you get more experience and get your own crane, and then just enjoy. Sky's it. the limit. Yeah. Sky's the limit from there. You know, we said it uh, earlier what the potential of it is. Um, there's just so much you can do, and this is really just a fun business and we want to share this passion with you guys yeah and by the way I don't this is not a company the, this industry takes care of the industry not just company by company there is that but if you're yeah. a crane operator for Joe Blow and you see Joe Schmo working over here yeah you guys have a camaraderie yeah you're yeah. a crane operator you're part of the, the brotherhood whether union non-union or whatever the case may be you're still part of the same industry there's a respect there yeah, yeah. and um, this is not anything it's not a 
crane service uh, video it just happens to be where crane that's service what we work for and that's from yeah that's our that's our passion um, but this is really just to help the industry in a, in a bigger scope of you know what it really takes to become an operator and you know this is just a 45 minute video of, of how to get it done there's so much more to it than what we're, we've told you today this is just kind of the formal training yeah you just get your door foot in the door that's the key so get your foot in the door get your cdl get your foot in the door come join our team come join your local crane team uh your crane rental house um we'll link up some of the crane rental magazines uh act american crane transport crane hotline that have cool resources to see some pictures of this maybe you want to learn more um we'll link that up i'm trying to think of what else uh, we can provide um uh, informational wise to these guys of course we'll link up nccco they can do some research on that anything that you can think of no i mean i think this is the way to go is um, I think that we've given them a, a good way to go. I mean, yeah. it's not it's not everything, but it, it gets you in the door. Yeah. Especially with us, and uh, if you time invested for the benefit, you're not going to do much better in another another field. You just can't. There's some also other things. Uh, Con Expo. That's every what three years? Uh, four years. I think it's oh boy. I, mean, I think it's three. Three or four years. It's a uh, Con Expo. Um, it's a Expo with just construction equipment, mostly cranes and agricultural. And I'm they, sure we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there next year or whenever it is. Uh, it just happened two years ago in 13. So I think it's next year or the year after. But if you maybe are on the verge of, I don't know if I like the equipment or maybe it's too big or maybe I want to see some of the passion, go to a con expo. It's in Las Vegas. It's a two or three day ordeal. You see the biggest cranes there to the smallest cranes. Everybody in the industry, the who's who is there. Maybe you want to break out and say, go say, meet some of these crane operators and crane owners. They have an NCCO test spot there. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. You? Well, yeah. Well, and you can play with the cranes and, and just really experience the industry. So maybe if you're on the fence, that's a great way to see it in real life in uh, controlled environments, of course, and, and check it out. Mm -hmm. agree. So, all right. Can you think of anything else that you want to tell the guys? I don't. I'm or girls here? Um, we're all good? We're good. Okay, guys, episode two, how to become a crane operator. Leave your comments below of um, whatever you want to talk about here. But I think this job has a really potential for a lot of people to have a great success in family and, and uh, take care of your family over time and yeah. see the world, do yeah. something different every day. I can go anywhere I want with my CCO and my experience and, and see, see whatever I want. That's true. You can put your time in here at Crane Service, or you can go to can. local crane company X in Hawaii. Or I would love, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, everybody dreams about the Hawaii yeah. job. Yeah, so. yeah. That one might be hard to get, but I'm sure there's someone's there. Um, yeah, check us out. Uh, stop in your local place if you're interested, and you can always email us. Uh, info at craneserviceinc.com. We'll also link that up in the description. If you have any questions, you can call us um, and ask any type of question will be your resource to get your uh, foot in the door. Let us know what you think, guys, uh, in the comments, and we'll talk to you soon for episode three. Cool. All right. We'll see you guys. Bye.